everyone how are we um if the camera seems a bit weird i'm filming on my vlogging camera again because as we know issues with the dslr i still haven't managed to get it fixed i need to just get myself organized and post it um but today i thought we would chat about kind of questions and um a little bit more of a deeper delve into motherhood i asked a few um for a few ideas of for content on Instagram and you guys sent some really interesting things but um, I'm not Emily Norris and that's not show, throwing shade at Emily Norris because she's amazing but I'm not this like hack kind of that kind of mom I wish I was so badly but I'm not um, and so for that reason I thought we would talk a little bit more this isn't the world's most flattering angle is it um, I thought we would talk a little bit more about um, just some kind of more in-depth questions that you guys asked i thought that might be a bit interesting so the most asked question was um when are you gonna have baby number two nobody said are you gonna have baby number two would you like more children it was when are you gonna have baby number two um i understand why people want to know this i understand that it's a question that people always ask I never ask it to people because something that always sticks in my mind is a friend of my mum's who um, outwardly seemed like she was a kind of very tough, wouldn't care what other people think type person, told me that she had been struggling to have a baby for years and um, every time she got asked when was she going to have a baby when she was married, um, it just like was soul destroying and it always kind of stuck with me so i'm always mindful of not asking people that for that reason um that's not the case um for me but the reality of it is is i'm not entirely sure that i want to have baby number two um i will full like full transparency admit that i have found motherhood a gazillion billion times harder than i ever thought that i would um I thought that being around children my whole life, being the oldest of five, I would have it like nailed. I would be so natural at it. And that is not the case. It is so much harder than you even could possibly imagine. And there's so much more to it than you could possibly imagine. And you can't imagine it until you're in it and you're doing it. It's not something that anything could ever even prepare you for in any way, shape or form. So, um... I kind of feel like I was in for a rude awakening. And I wouldn't say that I'm like... I wouldn't say the word is traumatised by it, but I think um, I'm still very much in the thick of it. Lola will be two in March, and I know that's kind of like a age mark where people will ask that kind of thing. Um, and it's something that, um, at this point in time, I have no desire for baby number two. Maybe one day I will, maybe one day I won't. Both options are fine. Um, logistically, juggling the business and everything like that is incredibly, incredibly hard. Um, becoming a new mum during a pandemic as well, which I know I'm not the only person who has experienced this, thousands and thousands and thousands of us have, um, has kind of put a weird damper on it in a certain sense even though there's been positives to that as well um but the answer is i'm not sure and i know that's a controversial answer um it shouldn't be a controversial answer but i know that it is it frustrates members of my family greatly who seem to keep wanting to ask the same question <laughs> um but that is just where we're at with it and i'm okay with it um and I think a big factor for me as well is, like I said, she'll be two in March and we're still up in the night every day pretty much. And I just don't feel like I'm kind of, like I've gotten to grips with it yet, if that makes any sense. Um, so that's that question. But moving on, um, one really good question was how to balance sharing with unwanted opinions not just online but with friends and family i thought this was a really interesting question and it kind of ties in with the first question um online i am very mindful um of what i share so for example a lot of people have asked could i do a what my toddler eats in a day and i'd love to do that and I'd, i want to do a video about kind of our weaning journey because touch wood lola is actually a really really good eater always has been um like you know she loved one of her most favorite things in the world is roasted courgette with olive oil garlic and zartar like seasoning 
she gets so excited by it but equally she probably eats a bit more sugar than she's supposed to um we have chocolate at home we have crisps and she goes and she asks for them and i say no nine times out of ten but most days she does have a bit of chocolate and she probably shouldn't and that kind of thing and i do worry about sharing that kind of thing online and getting hate because i'm so trying to do it right and i really take um I take what I feed my child very seriously, if that makes sense. I'm really mindful of it, more so than maybe other people um, are, and they have kind of like more of a kind of like nuanced approach to it, whereas I'm a bit about it. Um, so I, I worry about sharing things like that and people kind of judging me or saying, oh, you shouldn't be giving her this, that, the other, or you shouldn't cut that fruit in that shape or stuff like that even though I research these things and I, I try and do it right but like I do worry about that um so yeah I do I am very mindful of it online um and I find in person as well what I try and do is if I don't want an opinion about something I just don't mention it like I um I find like for example so my mum had five kids and my mum's style of parenting is very kind of different to mine in a lot of senses she's a lot more kind of natural and free and kind of like um it's just different I like routine I like structure I'm that kind of person and she's not and um so with things like that I just don't bother saying it most of the time because I know that it's just like people are just gonna not super agree however if you're in situations where you have to make a point of saying that this is how you do things for various reasons then i think that is important and you have to kind of set those boundaries so um you would just have to be like oh okay that's really interesting but this is how we're doing it and just shut it down because it's your child and it's your family and it's your dealing with it day to day so other people can have all the opinions that they like but um yeah it's it is it is a tricky one how much you share i do find that both online and real in real life and i really like that question um another great question this these were actually from um Michaela. she said recognizing what successful mothering looks like to you versus how you're measuring success what does successful mothering look like to me um i will admit I measure a lot of my mothering success on how my baby sleeps and that is a very flawed way of looking at it because it is neither here nor there and it's not really something that I can control despite my best efforts um, and ultimately how we should measure mother mothering success whatever that even means is it should be is your child happy and healthy and loved and both those two things, um, I'm lucky enough to say, it's three things even, I can't count clearly, my child has in abundance. Um, she is showered with love from every direction. She gets a lot of our time as well because it's just her and we kind of tag team being at home. Sorry if, that look, if it looks disjointed now, that was an interruption from um, our vegetable supplier just informing me that they, <laughs> they are gonna have to come back tomorrow because all of the spinach and all of the basil that they had was really rotten and they didn't want to give us that and I was like that's great but what am I going to do for today so I had to solve that um yeah I can't fully remember where I was we we're talking about success um but yeah how do you even measure that those are the most important things and I think we all give ourselves a hard time I really really give myself a hard time in terms of to me um my like version of successful motherhood is everything being really organized and on top of everything and that kind of thing and it's it's not always possible um another question that i thought was really interesting was things you do differently if you had any future children this was a really interesting question um so it would mostly revolve around sleep and it would just be to educate myself a lot more about baby sleep because I knew nothing I was really really ill prepared and I wish I'd known more about how um baby sleep differs and how to just create a kind of good routine and implement it a bit earlier on and 
sort of like independent settling and I'm not someone that kind of believes in like letting them cry out. I don't have any judgment towards it whatsoever if you do. Like I really, really, really don't. I think there are times when it's probably necessary and it's the only thing you can do. And if you can do it, then I'm all for it. Um, I just get too stressed out by it and I, I can't. Um, and I think also you have to kind of bear in mind the type of child that you have as well because Lola is incredibly, incredibly headstrong. I'm not joking when I say that she was literally like that, like as a tiny baby. She's very stubborn and very willful. Um, and so yeah, it's really an uphill battle with that kind of thing. Um, so I wish I kind of had educated myself more a little bit and implemented things sooner because we're still like cuddling her to sleep and she's nearly two. Um, yeah <laughs> then a, another question is do you have any at good at home activities that you guys do um i'm always on the lookout for more at home activities but we just do a lot of playing um she has a lovely little play area in the living room and we will sit on the floor and play with her um and do like reading and things like that um she really likes going for walks she really likes going to the park we keep it simple. She's still small. I think when she gets a little bit bigger, we can do things like, you know, colouring and stickers and that kind of thing. But at the moment, I, th I think she's still small for that kind of thing. Um, then we'll do we'll do one more question. Because some of these I want to make them standalone videos, okay? Um, do you ever have mum guilt? I don't think there's a mum alive that doesn't have mum guilt. Um, my mum guilt surrounds um, when I'm trying to do work. So obviously I have days when I'm at the restaurant and I'm physically there. Those are almost easier because I know she's either with my mum or she's with Paul and she's perfectly happy. When she's with my mum, I do miss her so much and I do really like just, oh, I'm like, oh, I want a Lola cuddle kind of thing. Um, when she's at home with Paul, I find that kind of easier mentally. But um that's almost better because it's like removed what i find incredibly hard is like on a sunday for example sundays are really full-on day for me i have loads of stuff to get organized i have a rotor to do and it's kind of really full-on and she sometimes wants my attention and i'm trying to do something on the computer and i'm like one minute baby one minute one minute one minute let me just send this email let me just do this let me just do that and she's like there and she's like wants your attention and i then i always go to bed feeling so bad for that but i can't like i can't do it any differently but it is hard so yeah, I do. <laughs> but um, yeah, let me know if you've got any more questions or any standalone topics you want me to chat about. I'm so happy to do so. And um, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you all next week. Bye bye.